So I was going to talk about another subject, really. It's the, the, the topic of um, simulated mental illness, which is the next tactic of the left, which is where all the psychotronic weapons come from. <laughs> well, from the globalist. Uh, certainly not from any patriot. These weapons are... You know, when you're when you're looking at microwaves and things, they're able to even a just a sort of a garden variety criminal gang stalker that's trying to just you know they move in in groups, they'll move into the neighborhood and they'll focus on somebody and try to drive them insane, and they get all everybody involved in jumping on because they're on the dark side. You have to understand the people involved are structurally initiated to the other side, to the criminal side, the dark side, Satan side, whatever you want to call it, that it's structural, meaning that, you know, when you're there, you're there, you know a lot of things that regular, you know, virgins, I guess, don't know. You see, you, you, it's like you, you know the whole set of the Truman Show, but Truman only knows the, the, the set he's living on. Okay? And so when they get tapped to join in, they agree. What they do is spread rumors and bad news about people and then uh, get the neighborhood to jump on and drive the people either out into, uh, you know, sleep deprivation, in, insanity, institutionalization, jail, or suicide. Suicide being the, pre the preferred. So it's, it's a really looked at from a, a spiritual point of view. The gang stalking and electronic harassment and using use of these weapons to, you know, to, you know, without any guilt or without any, anyone, uh, any adjudication, without any law enforcement, be able to uh, simulate mental illness and in a person. And then when they try to get help or describe what's happening to them, they get referred to the mental hospitals. And then that's a success. Because they're permanently, um, you know. Meanwhile, there's all kinds of different motives. I guess the one, the one on the ground is to get what you have, obviously, to 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 make a buck. For example, to um, to focus on, say, women and turn them into human trafficking victims by breaking them down and breaking their will down with these psychotronic weapons with the idea that as soon as they, you know, before they can actually get any help or that anyone would believe them, they oftentimes expire. In other words, there's a, a human sudden death syndrome involved in electronic stalking where a lot of people are now, <clears throat> because the weapons are so much stronger. Now, now, the military weapons, if they aim that at you, you'd be dead instantly. That that You have to understand that. Th those energy-directed weapons are um, used in the battlefield like that what they'll do is they'll have a way to you know and they they use these with lasers to bring down airplanes or bring down helicopters or whatever they can actually just bring down five or six planes at once just one little <clears throat> one vehicle with set up like that can take out an array of uh of incoming uh uh, uh hostiles so you know, the military is, seems to be focused more on the energy-directed weapons. And like I said, I've known people that worked on these programs. And uh, it's kind of hard for me to believe that someone I, you know, and, and it's, it's not who you think, but uh, just just that I know uh, someone that was like sort of preaching the gospel while working on the weapons. And I'm sort of like, well, what is it? Which What side do you want? I mean, you know, there is that question, right? Like, you know, and, and I don't even want to know anything about it. You know what I mean? This is a guy that was working at uh, Sandia Labs here. And he'd come here every once in a while to work here. And he was based in, uh, well, I don't want to give any more info. But it just, um, you know, it's, it's a strange world out there, folks. It's a really strange world. And this world that I'm dealing with is the world of, Gang stalking, you know, energy weapons. But then there's a supernatural component, too. That maybe it's part of the AI kind of thing that can seem like magic to people. But to where you get, you know, 
people seeming like random bystanders staring at you, you know, with hostile looks on their faces. You know, coming at you or bumping into you or, you know, making it impossible for you to, to move your car. It just seems, it, wherever you go, there's this coordinated um, attack. And again, in, in, and then you turn the radio on and the guy is talking to you directly. And then you're trying to get to, you know, and it just the weird things that we would, uh, uh, we, we would think would be supernatural in some way, because how could it be prearranged? Then there's a good old fashioned tracking of they surveil you so they know where you are, where you're going to go, and the, uh, and the AI can tell, you know, the, the supercomputers, whatever the network can tell the people that are perps to wait for you here, and then you'll arrive there, right? They can make a prediction as to where you'll be. So, which is it? And, um, you know, there are people that are afflicted with this, and, and they say, well, there's, you know, a thousand people against us. I don't know who they are. And so there's that, that proliferation of lists that goes on, where a person, say, may be marked in one way. The next thing you know, it's like there's a million people hostile, all coordinated. And so, like, it, it, doesn't, it, it seems so unreal that it, 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 just, it just doesn't seem like anything that could be planned at all in any way, shape, or form. People are just not that regulatable. And then, of course, there's the invasion of your car, your space, your tracking chips. People have been in the military. Did they have a chip or something? You know, is there there's some way of... There, there's just, you know, it, it just seems so coordinated that people don't believe it. See what I mean? It's too much. And so when a person tries to describe, yeah, then this guy, and then this guy over here, and this guy over here, too, I don't, that, that guy over there, you know, and that guy right there. And then, uh, you know, uh, the, they did something to the wires and my, something with my, my car. It's not, you know, they're, they're using my car as a weapon against me. I can't drive it, you know. And they'll say, look, I got someone for you to see who could help you. You know, maybe you need to be in a 72-hour hold at the mental hospital, which, of course, they're going to be building those like at breakneck speed now because this thing's, the testimonies have gotten out of control on this thing. The growing number of people have gone far, far in excess of what anyone would call mental illness, right? So the, so now they're, they're like, well, then they're already preparing for the, for the post-era of Trump where they can round them up and deal with them because the people that are targeted I guess overall you could say there's one thing in common but the main thing is they just don't they're just really not the kind of people that they want in the future and that'd be safe to say because the program is to drive all to death ultimately to eliminate them from society, to marginalize. And the whole thing about uh, taking people down, people are commodities so that you can use them, you can steal what they have, you can, you can break them down over time and, and, and get what you can, as these jackals do. And then finally kick them off the cliff, either to institutionalization, death, whatever. And now the newest thing, because the weapons are much more strong, we have sudden death. People just give out. They commit suicide because they just can't take it anymore. The only place that I know of where something could exist like that would be hell. could not exist on earth. It would have to be hell. Because the entire thing is orchestrated by Satan. The entire thing is orchestrated by the demonic. It is 100% demonic. It is magical. It does defy logic and science. And it is um, basically predatory in the sense that it is looking for good people to destroy. In fact, of the people I've met, I haven't really met any bad people who have gone through this uh, experience. But, I mean, it must be horrifying to really show up in a uh, 
somewhere in the marketplace, the square, you know, where you're just, you haven't done any harm to anybody. You're just trying to be a human and participate in human activity and to have the whole place turn on you. It's just so humiliating and degrading and to know you could never go there again. Your own community has made it so that you, you can't leave your home. Are they just mean? Are they all the same? Who are these people? Why the unison? Most people disagree on some things. They disagree on, you know, the, the color of the sky. They disagree on politics. They disagree on religion. Why wouldn't they, why would they be in lockstep agreement on the fact that you are the enemy of the state. You're the enemy of all humanity. Why would they all say yay to that you, who've done nothing wrong, are the enemy of all? Why would they all focus on you as the enemy? And I have the answer. Don't worry. I'm not going to let you down. I have the answer. It's because if they don't adopt that, they're next. And because they have special knowledge of the inside they will be killed if they don't go along with it, period. Or their children, or whatever they love, or their finances, or whatever. And they don't want people going after their finances or their children, so they will play along. Then there's that part of them that's sadistic, the fallen human condition, that gets off on playing a small part in targeting a person, an individual, and then watching them get tortured, degraded, hurting and suffering and watching them melt all the way down to death or to some horrible event. For them, it's exciting, it's dramatic. They get off on it because they're on Satan's side. They get off on other people's suffering. That's why. They've developed a taste for it because they got initiated into it. Satan's side is just basically a mirror image of this. On this side... We are rewarded in some way, you know, even if it's just in your heart, when we do good to others, right? We do good to others, we have compassion for other people. We, 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 um, help a person out in some way, you know, we just kind of like, you know, and when, when there's tragedies and things like that, we, we, we come up a notch or two in being humanitarian. The other side, there's no reward for that. Only that if you use it as a front, like you pretend to be charitable, you give donations to the cancers or whatever, so people see you as a philanthropist, but it's all part of your act to hurt people. And so then, you know, you'll be behind the scenes, you know, you'll, you'll own uh, whatever, you'll own, you know, shares in the Raytheon Corporation that's developing a lot of these weapons <clears throat> or something to that effect or Boeing or one of these. And, uh, and then, and then, you know, it, 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 it's just, it, it's just based on, the idea that um, you would get power from the harm of people around you while deceptively convincing them that you're on their side. Does that make sense? And that's how the, the best of them are that way. Okay, but still the same principle. If they really do good to anybody, they get taken out. They're seen as a failure. They're seen as softening. So they have to do harm to everyone around them. That's why we have wars, rumors of wars, economic calamity, uh, entrenched poverty, uh, sickness and death all over the world because these people have sold their souls to Satan and it's upon it's incumbent upon them to keep that suffering in place and even political parties, right, all keep the suffering in place, i.e. don't solve any of the problems, right? Uh, don't do good for humanity because then you'll be taken out. Because the world system is dependent on that very thing. Even a child initiated into the dark side, to Satanism, learns very quickly that he must hold his own and pull his own weight. And he does that by harming other people. That's the only way that you can succeed in that system. And I know there are people in that system who are big-time Christians and very charitable and they're very giving, but at the end of the day, there is still that bloodletting that has to happen. It's the saddest thing that I know of. I, it breaks my heart every day to watch human degradation and suffering because of a few assholes 
who refuse to um, <clears throat> give up whatever it is, who who spent millions and billions of dollars on their images to make people think they're good people, when in fact they're responsible for the world being the what it is. These honchos are people you see every day in the news. When was the last time Congress addressed the problem of evil? When was the last time the church system addressed the problem of evil for real, meaning the whole purpose of humanity is to destroy humanity? When, when, did, they, when did they explain that as the fall? They never explained that to me. I had to learn all that on my own. It took a, long, a lot of time and a lot of pain and suffering for me to realize what the hell's going on here. All right, you're hurting other people for the purpose. Hey, could you stop the uh, hammering, please? <laughs> stop the hammering, please. And... Um, you know, but again, it's all hidden so that as it looks like you do good, you do very bad, but it's all hidden. It's all hidden. It's all hidden. So people take the bait. They go, well, if it's hidden, then cool. I'm never going to get caught. And that's basically the majority of people. And that is why you have a world that you have. This world is actually worse than hell. So we have to have another name. What's worse than hell? You know, because fire and brimstone is nothing. This is, this is significant. Pure evil without God, without hope. <clears throat> Wouldn't that be hell? Pure evil with no love, no light, and no hope. And no God, no salvation. No way out. That's the the, 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 characteristic, the characteristic of hell. No way out. Well, that's not exactly what we have here. We do have a way out. <clears throat> so I can't say, but I can say the symptoms are as bad as hell. <clears throat> but, there, but there's still some grace. There's still a way out. But then you would be a good person, which means the world will hate you. They, the reason they hate Jesus uh, it's not without a cause. There is a cause. Um, <clears throat> I mean, that's a phrase. You know, they, they hate me without a cause. Well, the cause is because he is no harm to other people. And therefore, he must be killed. He is good to other people. Therefore, he should be killed. See, that's the world you were born into. He sold out to the other side. What does that mean? It means that he does evil to other people to boost his himself, his career, his his family above above yours, above the rest of the suffering masses, poor dears. That is a hellish situation. You mean if you come here and do good, you get punished, and if you do bad, you get rewarded? Yes, but it has to be in the game. It's got to be deceptive. So <clears throat> you do bad with a sheen of good, then you go, you go straight up, buddy, straight up. Sky's the limit. Sky's the limit. You can do anything. Things come easy. You know, whatever you dabble in, you know, so, so sometimes these people will dabble in painting. I see them and all of a sudden they're, they're so, well, it was George Bush dabbling in painting and he's selling in all these galleries and he's become a famous painter. That, that, it, all you need is love. Na, da, na, na, na. You know what I mean? And then it's like, it's like, yep, that and a good dose of Satan and you're off to the races. Whatever you dabble in, whatever dilettante thing you're doing, uh, <laughs> right? You want to dabble in politics, you'll be the next governor. You want to dabble in acting, you'll be the next Academy Award winner. <laughs> I dabble. Because you see, the primary cause and effect have been taken care of. Therefore, go ahead. Let your fancy flow, baby. It's all going to be rewarded. The ones toiling and working 
trying to be significant, trying to do the right thing, whatever their toil is. Of course, after a long embedded work, dedication, blood, sweat, and tears, more often than not, are denied. And that bill, that's a bill, by the way, the world owes. That bill has gone up to the point where the only way that that could be paid is to kill every last man, woman, and child upon the earth, and then some. And even then, the bill wouldn't be paid. For those who have struggled in the dark, you know, we do a show like this. They say, what's the purpose if there's no, well, there's no commercial purpose. The purpose is to survive. I do the show to survive. I was told by Dr. Stan Monteith, if I didn't keep it going, I wouldn't survive. So, why is that? Because, well, I just don't want to test that theory. He he he, he told me about um, several people that he knew that had written a book. They'd had a website. They'd had a, a talk show. And they just didn't want any part of it anymore. They just wanted to kind of like, you know, enough is enough. They want to go back to normal world. Right, They just want to go back to working at what they were working at before they had to go public on something, you know, something about Satanism, on the, the, the star whackers that Randy Quaid did, or the, anything like that. And they, they went and became silent, and, and he said, told them not to, and then they wound up dead, all of them. All of them, every one of them. He told me about four individuals. This was about 2003, and so I realized, if, you know, once you start something like this and you start talking about things, even if you're just one of a million voices, when we started, of course, we were just a few dozen of us, but now there's hundreds of thousands, maybe even more, which is great, great, wonderful. So my message to all of you is um, keep going, I guess, you know. But why would I not? You know, it's fun to talk here. It's fun to talk to you guys. It's just that we're on a journey. You're not about to... See, here's the problem. You join the world system, and what happens is you don't have a life. You just drift off into death. You know, you do something, some meaningless activity, and it seems like you're... It's all like a simulation. It's like it's not really you, and you don't really deserve it. And, you know, but anyway, and then you just go off the cliff in the end. It's, you, you become almost like a dead person on day one, and then you sort of play it out. And um, the people of the world that have, you know, are here, you know, contending for the faith and are trying to be good people, are trying to work out their sin, are trying to, you know, they're they're doing the best they can. Um, it's a series of fits and starts, and you know, knock down and try to get back up. And a lot of people don't make it; they 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 expire, they die, because it's too hard. I don't think any of us would disparage those people that just couldn't make it. Life was too hard for them. You know, the way it's set up here is too hard for most people. It's because of those few that enforce the, uh, the system. But, you know, they say, well, Satan influenced them. Yes, but, well, if they wanted to, they could give it up and we could have a free world, but they're not going to do that. It's going to take the return of Jesus Christ with a sword, <laughs> to cutting them down. That's what it's going to take. And I don't see that happening right away. So <laughs> we we hope Trump would uh, aid and abet us and, and, and drain the swamp. And, you know, the, the, there's so many trolls out there. I had one I had to get rid of the other day who was, like, calling Trump a Mossad agent and going on and on about he couldn't stop with the Jews. And so finally I just was, you know, he was, like, celebrating the fact that you know, the Jews got, some Jewish people got gunned down in a synagogue. I'm like, where's your humanity, man? Get out of here. What the hell's wrong with people? I'm like, you know, does it, you know, and, and, and meanwhile, this guy's benefited from all the economic activity and benefited. He'll take that, thank you very much. But when it comes down to, uh, you know, down to the whole thing, he, you know, these are people that, that just complain and whine and moan and don't, they don't do anything. They don't do anything. They just sit behind a keyboard and act tough. They sit behind a keyboard and act tough. Meanwhile, they don't, of course, they don't vote. They don't participate. They don't do it. They're probably in their mother's basement. You know, they're just, 
sitting there behind the keyboard acting tough and being snarky because they feel that, you know, no one can really come after them. No one's going to beat them up. <laughs> a hell of a way to live, you know? A hell, a hell of a way to live, a horrible way to live. I feel sorry for them, of course. But the problem is, is you know, I had a beautiful world for a couple of minutes. A beautiful future. But because of the complainers and the whiners and the backstabbers and the, and the, and the people that, that are voting for the crumbs and the lockdown and the totalitarianism, because of the people that say we have to have totalitarianism, global socialism and global squalor and pain, and then the elimination of humanity, we must have that. And all these people are voting for it tomorrow, and they're, they must have it. They must have human degradation. And so that's it for me. I mean, I don't know if I'm going to really... My, my point was proven already, and so if it goes back to the way it was, <clears throat> you know, and, and, um, and uh, everyone goes, oh, I told you so. It, wasn't, it was just a bubble in the first place. It was all fake. If they pull that one, I give up. Keep my eyes on the Lord, but I mean, I'm done with this, 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 whatever this human experiment, this BS is here on the earth. I'm done. People are too stupid, are to to actually and too depraved and too self destructive to do anything about it. But I, I'd almost plead with the Lord, just go ahead and kill everybody, including me, and let's get it over with and get on with it. You know what I mean? Let, this is already a joke. So that's kind of, I mean, when I'm watching them talk and I'm watching them vote. I, I, what the hell are they thinking? You know, I mean, just take Florida, for example. They're looking at a communist governor named Gillum over this guy that's a capitalist and, and a free market capitalist named Ron DeSantis and, and who, who's, you know, who doesn't have any scandal, who's, who's done, a, you know, a, a great job and he t- tried to hold the Democrats accountable, but you can't do that. They're above the law. I told you that. They've always been above the law in my lifetime. Well, and certain Republicans too, but once you join the dark side, you become above the law. You know that. So that, you know, so you know what they're, they're the party of, right? And don't worry, they got plenty of Republican traitor counterparts and, you know, Republicans are supposed to sit there with their thumbs up their ass going, uh, uh, me? Uh, I'm just going to follow the rules exactly. And have the Democrats walk all over them. That's, that's been my life experience from day one. You know, it's like they, they make some issue out of it and say, oh, you're being so cool at the border. Oh. And then they, then they open it up and all these invaders and terrorists come in, they blow something up, then they blame it on the Republicans again. I mean, it's, it's just, it's unbelievable. It's, I'm so sick of the repeating, 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 repeating pattern. But anyway, in Florida, You've got this guy, Gillum, who's obviously a checkered pass and a checkered situation in Tallahassee. And you've got this great guy who wants to keep, you know, things going. Florida, the reason I mention it is because it's like California was before the Democrats ruined it. And um, you got this no state tax, for one thing. And uh, you had property taxes pretty much in check. You've had income taxes. Like I said, there's no state tax just the federal, uh, you've got this burgeoning economy that is, that is growing too fast for, there's not enough employees to fill the slots that are available. So a good situation in Florida. And what they want to do is put on, uh, they said to have Medicare for all or some kind of thing like that, they have to have a, like a 38% sales tax, you know, a 10% state tax. And all this stuff that would just basically, you know, all these regulations and, you know, gun confiscation and, you know, free speech and, you know, all the, the whole commie agenda. And they're voting for it. And there's, it's actually a close race. So I'm going to have to, you know, take Florida off at least. Well, I like the, I guess I like the West Coast and the Panhandle. I guess that's as far, I can't go any further than that or, I, or I'd, I'd become sick to death from the uh, pollution of, people that desire to live in squalor and crime and pain and suffering. That's not me. I don't want to live like that. You know what I mean? I've given the solution, which is uh, just exactly what Trump implemented from, you know, his advisors, Arthur Laffer, Larry Kudlow, 
Uh, Laffer I followed way back when he was at USC, and uh, Cudlow, and then you had uh, and and others. And I and I knew, I knew knowing these guys, this brain trust that he had around him. I you know know, you know Wilbur Ross and a few others. I knew this brain trust he had around him. I knew that they'd be successful, and they have been. But I hear nothing but complaints out there. Nothing but complaints. So I'm kind of done. I mean, I'm not just, just you know, I'm, I right now have to take a pause. I, I got to try to draw some attention to this. The, the real problem we face right now is this, uh, the targeted individual um, electronic harassment, uh, directed energy weapons, and this this almost mutant zombie-like gang stalking that that is that is seems supernatural it's very strange all of this coming in at once but it's affecting now millions of people it's the biggest unreported crime in history and uh so we're trying to you know bring aware that's so that's where i'm i'm kind of serving right now with that and i understand some of you friends out there you agree with me that there's this whole demonic supernatural component to it that is basically not just satanism but of the kingdom of satan it's kind of like part and parcel of what what's underneath the covers here if you if you care to look right so it's tied in with the occult it's tied in with the worship of baphomet it's tied in with, with magic and black magic and, and the, the way things... It's like energy and the, the directed energy has fused with witchcraft. And it's, it's from the fallen angels. It's directed by Satan, directed by the demonic. And then it's multidimensional. It's interdimensional, which is what we'd expect when you're talking about extreme technology, right? It's interdimensional. And, and so, uh, Trish... That enough is enough. It's been, you know. Uh, there's nothing out there just for hours. So I, I can't deal with this. This is the this is the last time I'll be seeing you guys here anyway, because I'm going to have to rearrange everything because I'm getting busy with this project and I'm trying to I saw a horrifying thing yesterday a video maybe it only had 125 views when I looked at it it was about women being that's in or 80 percent of the victims in these cases with directed energy weapons that basically are are, are you know breaking them down and then uh killing them you know the, 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 there's this sudden death syndrome and then when they do the autopsy they're doing they're attacking in such a way that they can't tell through the autopsy what has happened so the reason they're killing them is just pure sadism just just because they can because they're getting off on doing it you know, it's the ultimate in bullying you know, because they're safe behind their Sometimes, as I'm aware, they can move into a neighborhood and put the electronic equipment in the basement, you know, and then the, the antennas on the roof, you know, and start in on the neighbors, right? And that's kind of like a premise of something I'm working on right now, where they're they're right next door, and uh, they've got and you know from uh, any any chance or do you want me to stop? We can pick it up tomorrow, you know. We can pick this up tomorrow. She's just intent on, you know, making it very tough. Making it very, very, very tough on us all. She's guarding us, guys. I know what she's doing, but she's got to stop for just, if I could just have a few minutes. I'll wrap it up. Ugh. It's hard to know who was worse. Molly was really, Molly would bark sometimes for like eight hours. And I think it's the reason she had to be adopted so many times because out here it doesn't matter. People, you know, aren't going to really hear you. But I mean, in town it would be, you know, a big problem. 
And they don't, they don't, they're not like that with the RV either. They seem to be pretty good in the RV. You know, they're quiet, but unless you come right up next to it, then they go after you. <laughs> and they're scary. But, you know, uh, that's the thing. Some of us do need protection. Anyway, so, you know, so picture guy, you know, it, it, it starts going off at work and your coworkers seem to be turning on you and, the boss seems to, they're playing a game with you with your car. They're, they're, your desk is rearranged when you get back to it. It's, it's not the way it was. Um, I know. I, I, there's nothing much I can do about this situation. Uh, I'm trying to, you know, I'm I'm sorry. Today was, maybe, you know, maybe I should think of another format. You know, maybe the thing to do would be to see, to try a video format and uh, and then do it in an, another location so that uh, I would be secure. You know, with, I should, you know, nobody should have to put up with what I put up with in terms of... <laughs> Nobody should have to put up with this. Uh, Come on, darling. What? No one should have to. I'm trying to talk about a serious subject here. Something that I've been, you know, research. I've had enough research now, you know, to last a lifetime. I don't really want to see any more. I can multiply. I was having trouble with sinking the people stalking a person and the electronic weapons together. How would that? How would those people know? Like, for example, you go through the coffee line and that person says something that proves they know about it. Then there's someone staring at you from across the street. Then you go to work and someone's in your spot. Then you go complain about it and then you look outside, there's no one in your spot. Obviously, there's gaslighting you to set you up for insanity. Then there's a component in your car that's, you know, frying you and your your, your head hurts because they're, you know, you're having feel like, you know, you've got some kind of headache or, God forbid, a brain tumor or something, but it's really a directed energy weapon while you're in your car and then you're home and at night you're being targeted, but you're, you know, let's say the kids and your wife, they're fine, but you're being, you know what I mean, this kind of thing. And then you, 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 you realize you did something, you made a complaint about a company you worked for a while back. They're about, you know... It, Maybe that's how you know it, it started, but you, you're not sure. You you had you were in the navy, let's say, but and you're not, you know. But that was a long time ago, and and somehow there's a connection there, and uh, or the uh, your w- wife wants you to go insane, get rid of you, so she could move in with her boyfriend, or move her boyfriend in, or something to that effect. Even that's a pretty good motivation, you know. That's that's a that's like a real basic motivation uh, of evil, of course. But, I mean, you know, there's all these things that... Or could they all be at play at once? But how do you get the guy, like the guy down the street or the group of people in the corner staring at you hostily? And then when you walk by, they start laughing. What the hell is that in, con- in context with all the rest of this? And how does that get coordinated block after block store after store, incident after incident, thing after thing. And then, you know, there's stuff happening with your kids that, you know, they're, they're, they're somehow your, 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 wife, your wife, you can't trust her anymore because she seems to be in on it as well. People that have their families who are turning the stocking on them while they sit back and act subtle about it, like, oh, do you need to see the doctor again? Right? You know what I'm talking about? I, I see all the heads nodding. Yep. <laughs> well, okay, so I guess I have it right, right? In my case, it was it seemed almost citywide, including my own family. Everybody seemed to be in on it. And uh, it was really, really so frightening. You know, that was, that was a, in, in an urban setting. And and like I say, the, you know, the clerk at the Safeway Market, how, how, how are they involved? How, you know what I mean? 
And it's got to go back to the, to the fact that all these people are in this hive mind, right? They're all connected. And so wherever you go, it interfaces with you. Wherever there's a human, there's a human plasma, a consciousness plasma that seems to, to be activated. Uh, I have no other explanation. I, I suppose, you know, now while I'm here, uh, you know, kind of like recluse and, and, and basically... But I've had my share here. I mean, in, you know, poison in 2010, sabotage, almost died in a car wreck. You know, a million different things happen even while trying to stay out of the way. You know, well, you know, trying to survive, I should say. I learned a long time ago that if you go fight them, like I go in the, in the square here, and it, it would cause a problem, just my being there. And, you know, wherever I went, there'd be like, it's almost like this sort of repulsion electricity that, you know, one would repulse the other kind of thing. And I'd go down filled with the Holy Spirit, ready to do spiritual warfare. And that seemed to help, but it seemed like so many of them that are under that hive control. And they can turn that on you wherever you go. Like we go to a restaurant here, you know, and they turn the whole restaurant on. Like like they could kill us, get rid of us. It wouldn't even be an article in the paper. How do they do that? Thank you. I need to remember that. Check that restaurant uh, scene. I, I need that in my film, the restaurant scene. Check. Well, you know, I'm not saying much about it. I, I, I did play a, a tune. I did get some good response from a few people on the on the track, but that track was... Uh, that I had played for you, but I have to kind of, you know, sequester it because it's, it will be an emotion picture and then you'll see it, you know, you'll, you'll hear it, but it will be probably with picture. The the purpose of it is to be a, uh, is not to be just music on its own, although I am a big fan of sound. In fact, when I write, you know, I haven't written in a long time and uh, I've started writing and I, I can't believe, I used to barrel through, I mean, I used to, and I can, I was well, like a kamikaze writer. I could write a script in a week, you know, like 120 pages. And, and I just like, and I did. But I, I think, you know, one of the problems that, that you have, see, the way I'm doing it now is like I'm thinking, you know, because I'm going to be having to, you know, to make this thing. So I'm thinking about all the different problems that can be caused with each scene. You know, every time you write a scene, it's a potential, there's like 10 potential uh, potholes you can fall into. And the whole thing about a script, a screenplay, is that it's just, it's just a big problem that has to be solved. And that's like movie making. It's a, it's a big problem that has to be solved. For example, you know, you, something, you decide on a piece of action at about you know, 30 minutes in. Well, you need to go back and foreshadow that with something else back, you know, 25 pages ago. So you, you can't just barrel through because you create those little anomalies that have to be dealt with. It's, a, you know, I'm telling you inside baseball here, but, you know, so, so therefore it's not easy to barrel through. And I used to like having a step outline and I'd have a step-by-step of where I'm headed, like end of Act 1 would be this, end of Act 2 would be that, Act 3 would be this, you know, the midpoint of the picture would be, would be this, and then, you know, and, and I, almost a million times out of a million times with those things, they just stop being useful. In other words, if you follow the step outline, you fail, because when you did the step outline, you didn't foresee the pitfalls that were just awaiting until you started fleshing the scenes out. And then you see, then, you know, then you realize, maybe I should have done this thing, or maybe it should have gone over there, maybe it went the wrong way here. Something happened to, to, you know, so, you know, and then when you write a treatment, a treatment is a narrative, is more of a, uh expository style of, say, taking your step outline and then putting it into a kind of a, um, you know, like a little bit of a short story form. They can be up to 30 pages long, and they just basically a, an additional roadmap of where you're going. Or if you do lots of character bios, which I've done, then what happens to that? Well, about, you know, scene, 30 scenes in, 
you realize this guy can't be that. He's got to be more like this. And then you got to go back and think, okay, so he's not what I thought he was for the last three months. He's this. And then you have to fit, and all the ramifications of a change like that, can you imagine? All over the place, subtle nuances that, you know, what would a guy like, your, now you have a new revelation about your character, what would he do now? He wouldn't do that, what he just did over there. He wouldn't say that piece of dialogue over there. He wouldn't go to the left, he'd go to the right. He would do this, he wouldn't do that. You understand? So it's just, it's very... That's why there's not that many great movies because, I mean, the people of the past that used to write screenplays and, and I've been watching, watching the, you know, trying to figure out what's wrong with movies. I just saw one with Nick Nolte and I forget the name of it. It was totally forgettable. They, oh, it was perfect filmmaking. It was done by some Canadian people and they, they had kind of an anti-white man thing going and it's sort of a pro, pro, you know, open border thing happened. You know, they, they were like total libtards that made it. But still, it was really good, really good directing, okay? Really beautiful camera work, even though digital cameras. Nice scenes of, you know, and shot in Colombia, South America. It was very interesting terrain and people, a lot, of, mainly in Spanish, but you had uh, Tim Roth and you had Nick Nolte, who I just love him. I mean, so crazy guy. And you had, uh, a little Hispanic uh, girl, I guess she wasn't so little, she was like becoming a woman. I, she she was playing like 12 or 13, but she looked like she was more like 16 or 17. Anyway, it was just a little story about con artists and, uh, you know, that it's, she was hooking up with this guy that pretended to be a priest and they would be picking pockets and things like that down in like Columbia, right? And then uh, the Nick Nolte guy was like a lawman who was after him because, <clears throat> and this has kind of hit my heartstrings, because this guy was to have a baby with his daughter, and uh, he he returned to the bottle sometime during her pregnancy. He he, you know, that can happen during a pregnancy that that sometimes people act up, you know. And he uh, hit the bottle again, and he wasn't aware that when the baby was breached, she needed help, and he was passed out, and uh, she died. The baby died. And the guy's had a vendetta ever since. So it sounds pretty good, right? For mo just a real simple motivation. So I was wondering the whole time, what the hell's wrong with this movie? I'm just, I love, you know, Spanish language. I, I love uh, seeing uh, the, 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 the whole, uh, you know, the whole lay of the land and you know, being somewhere besides an American city. And, you know, there's just something, and, and I love the shots were perfect, uh, you know, you get an A from the teacher in film school 101, and the Canadians are very good at this, uh, doing perfect-looking films. But what the hell was wrong with it then? So I'm scratching my head, and I'm trying to think, well, I don't like the PC stuff. Is it because they're, you know, libtards or whatever, that, because they're liberals that made it? That Usually I overlook that. You know, I say, okay, so they're going to push you know, open borders, and they're going to push, you know, the, this whole agenda that if you're white, you have privilege, even in Africa or someplace where they, you know, basically in South America, it's like, you know, great gringos probably don't have too good reputation right now, but, you, you know, they're making it so that even there, any white person has, you know, privilege, and, you know, down on whitey, you know, and I'm like, okay, so typical, you know, they've got their libtard, uh, bona fides there make sure everybody in the world knows they have a political bent to their story okay and they try to act like that's really the character you know which it was out of out of line for the character but that's not what brought the movie down but again beautiful imagery fantastic music i love the music super clean crisp mix just awesome in 5.1 surround Okay, so what what the hell? And and I to the I just you know I've been thinking about it all night because I'm worried about you know I worry about things like this, and I couldn't figure it out. Then it finally dawned on me in the middle of the night. They followed the rules. They're very conformed to people. They're very traditional, and and, and so something just bad battered down the soul of this thing it didn't fly it didn't it didn't it didn't exhilarate it didn't you know it didn't it wasn't 
even that heartrending. He didn't really care when the you know the the people that she cared about. The girl was the main character, I guess. When they were dead because they they shot each other or whatever, he felt no emotion. She finally immigrated to the United States with a fake passport, which, of course, the filmmakers completely condoned, right? A good little George Soros butt boy, right? And uh, and she immigrates to, to Minnesota, and that's a good thing on a fake passport. And uh, life is happy ever after because there was, it was going nowhere there. She's a thief, a con artist, a liar, and she's being exalted as a hero, of course, right out of the... It's just, you know, and I'm thinking, is that why the film didn't work? Because we're exalting a criminal as a hero. There's no consequences. People say, oh, it's hard life down there in Colombia. It's hard down in impoverished South America. They should have a better life. So it doesn't matter if they steal and, and, and rob and lie and steal passports and get in on a fake passport because they they deserve it. So that's the, well, you can say I'm not really recommending that. I'm just saying that's the, it seems like the filmmakers were more into giving us this message in a way. But that's not what killed the film. I mean, you've got Tim Roth, who's like an A-class top actor, talent guy. And, and he was wasted. And you had Nick Nolte was wasted. And you had, uh, what's his name, uh, Guzman, the um, character actor that's a Hispanic guy. That, uh, he's in lots and lots and lots of movies. Uh, uh, is I, I forget his uh, Luis Luis Guzman. Okay, and so he was there, kind of like the liaison speaking Spanish. So you have a great cast, and the girl is very good. But somehow, and like I say, the shots, you know, the coverage, you, know, you had, you had these. Uh, I, I could see technically they were perfect. You know, every single setup was perfect. Editing was perfect, you know. A couple times they cut the music off; they didn't fade it. But I'm not going to dock them for that. I just just wanted to understand, you know. So many movies fail. Why did this one? When they did everything right and they dotted every i and they crossed every t, and you know the the political message was there. It wasn't that bad, though. You know what I mean? It's like yeah, it wouldn't fool you. You just basically say, you know, I'm I'm not buying it, right? I'm not buying that some little thief and con artist. Uh, deserves to have this sort of free ride and be the hero because life is hard, right? Which is the typical leftist message any time you hear them. Uh, so I don't know the answer to that question. <laughs> if I did, there would be not enough money in the world they would pay me to be a consultant on their films. If I could figure out what's wrong with this picture, uh Trust me, I'd be uh, worth my weight in gold. I can't do it. I don't know why. I just say that if you're going to do anything like that, if you're going to make a documentary, you know, I would urge people if you feel like making a documentary on this targeted individual thing, um, there's a lot of exciting stories that can be told in a narrative fiction. And then, of course, if you're going to bring the Lord into it, the Christians will hate you because they don't want the Lord mixed in with this thing that they don't acknowledge is true. They will, you know, caution. They, if you're, if you're expecting these evangelicals to like, if you're, if you're going to do a subject matter like this societal problem we have, they're not going to, they're going to reject it because they do gang stalking in the churches. You see what I mean, folks? Don't expect a nice audience there. Then we've had so many infiltrators in the TI community, and I'm just going to talk about that. I'm not going to talk about any projects I'm doing regarding it. I'm just saying if you're going to do a documentary, which is a, is a good idea, great idea. We don't have enough. We have a lot of citizen journalists doing a lot of, a lot of testimonies, and they're just heartbreaking. I, I can't think of anything just more horrifying. I, I, the idea of being, you know, stalked and then, and then, you know, basically uh, tortured with, with devices because you happen to be in the wrong place at the wrong time and with no possible recourse. 
accept more suffering on your part if you tell people then they they, they then you're crazy etc and these infiltrators okay these psychiatrists are showing up more and I've seen them I've seen them on my own YouTube uh, channel to where they show up on on YouTube and you know and not that often but every once in a while you get a guy that goes you know, gang stalking is a mental illness. If you believe it, you need help. Okay? Which is the worst thing you can do. But, I mean, they're doing it because they're getting, obviously, somebody's worried about getting caught because it's going to critical mass. There's so many people complaining about it now. Back when I was having my ordeal, back as a teenager, oh, it was terrible I even had a scene in, in uh, you know, in, in one film where it got taken out, but I had a scene where, like, the, this guy is on the lam, he's, he's, he's driving down Sunset, three in the morning, and all these people have gotten out on their driveways. Now, mind you, I'm writing this back in the 80s or something, you know, well before this topic ever got really, you know, big, and... And they were all in their, like, PJs and whatever, and robes and things, standing at the end of their driveway. There are residences on Sunset. And, and forming almost like a parade to watch him drive by at 3 in the morning as he's trying to get away from uh, them that are trying to kill him, you know? He's escaping them. He's on the lam. He found out that the society is completely satanic. He's running from them, you know, and, 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 and he's headed toward the coast, west on sunset, and three in the morning, all the people gather on the road to watch him drive by in anticipation of his driving by, to stare hostily at him, demonically at him as he goes by, to let him know they're in on it too, the entire... So the filmmakers who, you know, decided not to have that scene... But see, it was in that. It, that. See, that's the problem, you know. See, it got excised. You know, they, it's, 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 uh, they didn't want it. One of the most exciting scenes, that, you know, the idea that this was not just paranoia, that, 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 you know, there was some kind of weird conspiracy, some hive mind conspiracy involving... You know, it was important enough to get people out of bed at three in the morning to watch him and stare hostily as he drove by. He was the main course. He was targeted. But then, but how important must a person be? I don't even know if they they wait for Donald Trump out there on the road at three in the morning. So, how important would a person be to be to be like at that? And how much money was spent on these setups? How about a fake wife? How about fake kids? I mean, they're kids, but they've turned on you. Some, they're conspiring against you. How, how about you have a fake wife, fake kid, you know, live in a house, fake friends, fake job. You know, it's not, everything is just going to turn on you. What, what about that? And doesn't that make you look mentally ill? You know, that your wife, your loving wife, your children, your friend, your best friend, your, uh, Co-workers. Your, um, the, ra- the guy on the radio. Bystanders on the street. And on top of that, there's electronic harassment, too. How in the world, you know, and, you know to, to sleep deprivation and, you know, uh, heating up of your temporal lobe and 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 uh you know just the inability to really put thoughts together anymore and just being you know being fried by your by your uh, devices in your home that are being piggybacked by some kind of EMF device that is you know enhancing the EMF radiation around you that's that seems to be bothering you but not your wife and not your children but you and then when you start figuring it out and saying that there's some organized stalking and an organized conspiracy, that's when your significant others start recommending treatment. Am I close? 
to kind of a universe. Do we all accept this scenario as kind of like a like a little bit of a template for so many? That's what you know. That's the trying to distill it down to that. I think I've got it, though. I think I've got a handle on it. But it's just, and again, you know, making it believable. You, you know, people that have videotaped their stalkers and videotaped what they perceive to be the stalkers, and I have no reason to doubt them. Uh, but, but the presentation to the world out there that doesn't know anything about this, they would seem like they're nuts. They're just filming people in a crowd that they haven't done anything. I mean, what are you talking about? Maybe you need some help, you see? Not to mention the fact that there are infiltrators out there who are probably coming in as agent provocateurs coming up with all kind of cockamamie stories about, you know, tying it in with aliens and all kind of other thing, you know, I mean, well, we've done that here, but I mean, you know what I mean, in a, in a, in a, in a more nutsy kind of way, you know what I mean, not in, not in, a, not in, a, in earnest, earnest, I've, you know, right, there's a difference between just trying to be sensational and being earnest, they're being kind of overly sensational to discredit everybody else, and then there's an increasing number of people, like I say, they, they say they're from the mental health. They'll, they'll say, get some help. By the way, here's an 800 number you can call. Meanwhile, uh, if you go to seek help by those people, they'll act like they put a group together and the TIs will go to this group, but the people running the group ha are just simply tracking them and have no intention of anything. They think they're all nuts. But nuts, I mean, it's, what's nuts is having people that are unrelated around the world uh, targeting you, at, you know, for bullying or for staring or for messing with your stuff or doing something when you don't have any connection to them and there's no predictive anything about you being wherever you are in the world, whether you're here or France or, you know, uh, Florida or where, wherever you happen to be. And no explanation of the contiguousness or the or the linkage between anybody. No way of proving that, even though it's coordinated uh, worldwide, not just statewide, citywide, countrywide, but worldwide. How how does that how how does that happen? Okay, let's reverse engineer it. How do you fight it? The only way that you could actually fight it would be to have the the the, the, the to have a relationship with the Almighty God, right? I mean, you'd have to have God who who that's the only one that could actually see ahead and see all these things and ask for protection and hope the Lord gives it to you. <clears throat> Other than that, you can't protect yourself. Nobody can. And when the, you know what? I've tracked a couple of his people. Go look on Amazon.com and you'll see books on this subject that you can download for Kindle. That, that just means you can download for an iPad or whatever. And uh, you'll see some people offering solutions. They'll give a critique of the book and they'll say, contact me for the, if you want to get over your stocking and defeat them, contact me at my website or my email address. And they'll put that in the uh, description of the critique of the book they're talking about. Really, they're promoting themselves. They say they can get, they can get you free of it. You know, for me, I, here's my perception. The stalking goes on whenever there's anyone gathered together at all, anywhere. <laughs> it starts in, right? So it's like 100% of the time. And uh, But but you, you say to yourself, you know, how is it that most people don't notice this? And the answer is most people don't notice this because 
until a person, really until a person's eyes are open, until they actually are, uh, face to face with this reality, you know, it seems that once you are, then, then, then there you are, then you see it everywhere and, you know, all the time. Uh, they don't bother with the innocent ones because no harm, no foul. They bother with people that, that possibly could, uh, through their awareness, uh, do damage to their system, which would be bringing, what would do damage to their system? Bringing awareness to their system, which they wouldn't want. There have been some movies kind of on the subject, but they've been, you know, muddled at best. You know, I don't think you could, the subject's so vast, I don't think you could actually, I mean, you you could do like different kinds of films or different kinds of documentaries on different aspects, maybe. Uh, I don't know, it's it's a... It's a I'm just kind of just thinking about a guy that's just starting to perceive all this. And clues are going making him now suspect, you know, his own family and significant others around. And just the sheer terror that event it eventuates when it gets to be like the exaggerated point, which is that anybody suddenly, you know, they turn and stare. Evil eye. They turn and they, they they want to stop you. They want to get you. They want to hurt you. You know, it just seems like anywhere, anyone. The whole point of which is to cause retreat, and the person to, uh, as predicted, go into their hovel, cower in the corner, and hope it passes. And like I say, the people that are not, you know, initiated into it, you're initiated one way or the other, either as a victim or a perp, right? You're initiated, you know. People that don't seem to know anything about it seem to be left alone until the, until they're not. But to me, it seems like the system is growing so huge that, and the temptation for corruption and criminality so big, and the protection of Satan, because Satan's running it so strong, and they all know it's Satan. They all know. You know, I oftentimes I fantasized about grabbing one of them, you know, taking him to my garage, shutting the door, tying him up, and beating a confession out of him or waterboarding him, you know. You know, and getting it on film. Because <laughs> you know, that's my, my, my instinct would be, we'll fight back. If law enforcement is, you know, not going to help, you know, somebody has to, you know, get get this reality out there somehow. How about, uh, you know, uh, use a little, you know, you, you, you coercion technique and get it out on video, at least, you know, and, and the, they go, here's my perp here, and they follow the guy with the camera, and, and it just looks like a guy walking. It's, you know, grab the guy, you know, so I saw another confrontation. The guy, why are you following me? Why are you following me? You know, who the hell are you? Why are you following me? You know, it looks like if you if you continue to film that, it looked like the guy who is filming, trying to get it, the truth out, will be the guy that law enforcement picks up, not the other guy. That's why it looks at ninety percent of the cases. Why is that? Because he's saying, why are you following me? Like he's paranoid and making it up. Why are you following me? And the guy's going, I don't know what you're talking about, man. Why are you following me? And then he gets out of the car and he goes and, and punches the guy in the face. The other guy files a complaint with the police. The police pick up the, the guy that say he was being gang stalked. The other guy laughs his ass off in the court. The, the victim goes to jail for assault. And and they win. Every time. Every time. Every time. Every time. So because of that, people don't tend to follow through because it's it's it, it, it makes the person who is complaining look like the crazy party. 
Now, of course, that's triggered the influx of the you know the rise of shrinks and the influx of the mental health profession, which looks like if the left ever gets power, you're going to see these hospitals and things being built all over the place to house these poor people that are having these delusions and these psychotic breaks. So there you go. Sat, one of the saddest things, I, a topic too controversial for, you know, for uh, the Discovery Channel. I mean, if they do something on it, like Jesse Ventura did, it'll be kind of like stories about the occult and things. It'll, it'll be for a small segment of the population. It'll be inconclusive, and there'll be no follow-through on it. Even if I tried to do a documentary, and I use my best, our most artistic skills to make it very credible, and and storytelling skills, it would. It's very difficult because it looks to the public like the victim is the perpetrator almost every time, even in the driest uh, accounts. You see even though I know it's the other way around. It's like the guy that, you know, he killed 10 people. He said they were demons, his neighbors, and he killed them all in Los Angeles. I don't know if it was 10, it was maybe two or three. It was in a house. I didn't really have any reason to doubt his story that they could have turned into demons and he was he was having to get, it was either them or him. But he's in jail or wherever he is and or in the institution, forever. Another question would be, why do they win every time? They win every time because the people that are victims are very troubled people, you know, by the time that, that, you know, anyone can take a deposition or get testimony from. they're, They're already, you know, if you've had sleep deprivation and you've had... Electronic attacks on your on your brain scrambled, and your you you, you the, the, your organs are cooked, and you know you've been microwaved and everything else. Uh, you're not exactly a, you're you're gonna they're gonna say, well, obviously you're very troubled, but we don't believe your story. What, there's a you know maybe you're sick, you need help. That's what they'll do. Now, I think you agree with me on this. When the TV starts talking to you and the radio talks to you, the shrinks have a field day. They're like, that is a psychotic break when people say that that's more akin to schizophrenia. When you see the, the, the saying the TV has got a message for me or you're, you're hearing voices in your head. Well, the voices in your head, if it's gang stalking related, those voices in your head are being done by microwaves that are mimicking and, and they're able to carry... Uh, recordings or voices or even live voices uh, as, as if you're hearing them generate in your head. Yes, they can They can easily do that and do. Uh, they, they're even working on communication system in the military where people can communicate with each other uh, through electronic bionics, let's say, and thought waves and be able to beam thought waves into each other's head without having to speak. But when a person says, you know, they they keep telling me to do this, they tell me to do that, they start laughing at me, they're, they're just, I can't get away from these voices, they want to put you on heavy medication for schizophrenia because uh, those are the only people that hear voices like that. It's called audi- auditory hallucinations. Auditory, audio, auditory the auditory, auditory hallucinations, not auditory, but audio, audi, auditory, auditory hallucinations. And uh, they say, no, they're not, because they're calling me by name, they're saying specific things, uh, they're just taunting me with this. I mean, you know, we've, maybe they have a chip on me somewhere, maybe there's something up my nose, I mean... I should at least have an MRI. No, no, no. You're going to the you're going to the shrink, buddy. There's no MRI for you. 
and, and on and on and on and on, multiplied by thousands and millions. And the worst part of it now, what we did not have a decade ago, what we have today is sudden death of people. People dying, not from suicide, but, but dying because their, their organs give out suddenly from being fried. This is kind of a beyond, you know, this topic is beyond Nazi torture. This is, you know, to be able to torture innocent citizens because you don't like who they voted for, because you don't like them, because you want something from them, because you want to shake them down, because it's part of a greater network, uh, and they're just on the list. It, you know, there's any number of reasons. One thing's for sure. It's growing bigger by the day, but as the denial is too, and the answer is to have more shrinks and more mental hospitals. That's the answer, to, to house the growing problem. Now, you know who's bringing that to you. You know, the same old people. Same old bad guys that are involved in politics. That's right. Eisenhower warned about this. This is the military-industrial complex at its worst. And so I hope you can, uh, you know, I hope you can can understand that the way we must anticipate this is a spiritual war because it's hive. No, it's not an electronic hive. I keep having arguments with people. It is not an electronic hive necessarily. They're, they, they're experimenting, experimenting with that for the military, but I'm saying ultimately this sort of global hive thing is... Um, typically spiritual warfare and is demonic and is supernatural and is multidimensional as is this whole thing this whole topic is multidimensional and people don't see that the reason that you have to see it that way is so that you can explain suddenly how things can turn and then they go back again like it was like the way you thought it was and and people too they, they seem totally, and then all of a sudden, they're the, the ones you thought you knew. And um, this is this is you know in, how how do they do it? We don't know how they do it. It's it's beyond our technology. It's beyond our, our mind's ability to comprehend. It's beyond our D-wave computers. It's beyond our uh, supercomputers. It's beyond anything that we have. It's beyond AI. It's beyond you know the machines doing all the thinking for everyone. It's beyond all this, but one thing is for sure. This whole thing is brought to bear because they want the souls of men. It's the same old, same old reason they do any kind of harassment. It's because they want to break people down, and that's how they get their power, by the way. They say, well, what do they get out of it? They're not, what they get out of it is, I just told you, they get power. You know, they, 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 they prey upon innocent people, and you know, usually for a money motive of some sort. But there's also a power motive. There's a perverse motive. There's a human trafficking motive to break people down and then abduct them for human trafficking. Absolutely. It's all connected. When we pray for 20 on 20 for the human trafficking, we're basically, we are basically going after the same, as Govinda would call it, the same taproot, he would say, of Satan's kingdom. You know, gang stalking, human trafficking, electronic harassment. All these things are, the, are, are satanic sacraments. Later, have you seen how lately they're, they're pushing the afterbirth abortions? That's the newest thing. They're, they're actually doing it. Afterbirth abortions are going... Evil has risen under Trump. Trump can do so much, but he, he could not stem the tide of evil, which has increased, I'd say, doubled under his watch. One of the reasons is because they feel so upset with him, they're pushing to get everything through. And one, one of the things they want is post-birth abortion. That would then justify what? 
that would get them off the hook for human sacrifice for their satanic covens and rituals. Yes. That would end the end. There'd be no more need for law enforcement on that, right? The breeder would simply give up the baby. Uh, They kill the baby. No must, no fuss. There's nothing illegal about it. And that, and life goes on. You know, don't think for a minute these people are not hardcore Satanists wanting to bring all their garbage right up to the surface and forcing everyone to accept it. That seems to be their way. We have fought and fought against it. I don't think this can be won on with bullets, with guns, with people losing their temper. And I mean, I mean, you know, I fantasize about, you know. But getting one lowly hive mind person and beating a confession out of them for YouTube and saying, yep, I really was part of the, it's going to do nothing. Zero, zilch nada, not worth it. Plus, we can't lower, we, you know, there's the thing. We don't fight, you know, we can't fight evil by becoming evil ourselves. We just can't do it. We have to have, you know, godly patience, which, you know, God tries our patience. He did with my daughter, you know, it's like, well, Zeph, what are you going to do, turn on me? Or seek me for help? Uh, plenty of people may have chosen the, the former. Turn on God. How dare you let my child die? How dare you not intervene? <laughs> I know. Well, I can't really talk. There's not really much more to talk about on this subject. I just have to, uh, in my own way, try to make my own contribution toward the subject matter. I, I'm, um, you know, pretty much up to speed now on where we are. With and and I feel so sorry for some some of the people. You, they've got YouTubes out there, uh, and uh, they're documenting their their torture, which is just really hard to watch and, and and it's really sad but again from another perspective even they look like mental patients to not to me necessarily but to the, the society itself they look like mental patients who are just making it up they you know because it because why because it seems the story is too fantastical and people just can't believe it and they just think the guys you know needs help and and that's just where it's at. When they start talking about, you know, their teeth are being used to 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 bring in the uh, EMF rays to 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 you know torture them and so forth, and they, you know, they start getting into into that kind of explanation, people tend to think, okay, there's something. This guy needs help. That's what they think. That's not necessarily what I think. That's what they think, and that's what they're always going to think. And then there's people out there making stuff like that up to make people look bad because they know what's going on, but they don't want it to ever come to the public light. Yeah. This is probably the biggest part of Satan's kingdom, this and human trafficking, obviously, that, um, that they don't want known. Somehow it's right there in our face, and everyone knows somebody affected by it, Right? But they don't want it brought to light. They really don't. And they'll do anything to prevent that from happening. Um, right now, they've got an advantage because everybody looks like a mental patient because they start telling their testimony and people don't believe it really. They just think it's too much. Couldn't possibly be because they're not explaining there is a supernatural element. If they would say that, it may make a little more sense because what they're saying seems supernatural, but then they're appending it to natural, saying, well, the military is doing it. Local law enforcement is doing this to me. The neighbor down the street's doing all this to me. And then that somehow explains the random interaction with people and gang-stalking bullies and things like that that make no sense. It, it doesn't make any coordinated sense. So, you know, Hollywood has left it alone because I think, 
you know, obviously they see the pitfalls they're in. There's a tremendous amount of them. Um, we've had a couple things. I don't know. There was one guy that I've got to find out. There was one movie that I never saw beyond a little monologue the guy was given in the beginning, so I don't know what happened to that. It did not make a splash, though. The, the, the fictional films have tried to deal with this in another way, like the game with Michael Douglas is kind of, you know, was pretty entertaining. Look, you know, it was really more of a thriller. And that's kind of, I think, one way of getting at it because people don't mind dealing with the impossible as long as you can explain it to them in a, in a fictional sense that, that you can make them satisfied that they understand what they just saw. Otherwise, they'll turn on you. They'll turn on you because it, it, they don't understand. It's just like it becomes gibberish. Yeah. And if it's a story you're telling them, they're going to want to understand. If they care about the characters at all, which they should after a couple hours. Yeah. With, with the Michael Douglas film, The Game, out so long ago, directed by David Fincher, uh, that particular film um, used a group of people in a cafeteria-like setting all working together to... Uh, create this guy's game, unquote, uh, as the explanation. And even though it was hokey and clunky and goofy, it did provide an explanation. Totally unsatisfactory to people like me, <laughs> you know, because it, it's just a cop-out. But, you know, it, it, it did get the job done. Uh, you know, these people that made that movie are very artful. They're you know, great lighting, great acting, Great scripting, great uh, special effects, but they couldn't get beyond, you know, kindergarten with their explanation. They had to make it 